Okay, now, generally speaking, when you think about how all of this works, right? You have information and you have rules, and then out of that, you draw a conclusion. Okay? So we sort of have this general pattern, right? There's data, and that leads to a decision. Okay? You think about what you know, and then you make a choice based on that. But, and up pull up. Computers actually view these as kind of simultaneous. They can look at, you can start on this end, or you can start on that end, and go from one to the other. Here's what I mean, right? Uh, and by the way, let me give you names on this, and then I'll try to explain it. Go from data to the decision, okay? It's called forward chain. Because, as is implied, you're going forward from data to the decision you're going to make on the basis of it. Right? Forward chain. Now you may, or the system may, start from a decision and go back towards data. Now that might seem a bit backwards to you, which is why it's called backward chain. But actually, as you'll see in a minute, as humans, we use both of these on a regular basis all the time. Um, my question is trying to imply this, right? Sometimes one is useful, and sometimes the other is useful, and sometimes a combination of both. So let me try and explain. Um, <laughs> to do things backwards, I'm going to start with backward chaining. Okay? Backward chain. Now, the idea is I want to make some kind of decision. right? So I think I was talking about uh, the weather before and whether I should wear an extra jumper. Okay? Now, pause there for a second. I get up in the morning and uh, I'm turning the lights on and I'm about to pick some clothing. Okay? Now, that question, should I wear a jumper, an extra jumper today, right? that's the decision. Right? So actually, my starting point, the starting point of my thinking is, here's a decision, and I want to know whether I should do it or not, or what kind of variables there are there, like which jumper should I wear, or something like that. So in that case, I've actually begun here on this side, a backward chain. Right? So now that I've started with my decision, I need to see should I do it or not. So now I've got to go search for some data that relates to that decision. So I get my phone out, and I check the weather. Right? Or, you know, Wi-Fi is down or something like that. So I look out the window, I open it up, and I'm like, is the air coming through cold or not? Right? So you can see, starting from this decision, it guides what data I should look at. Does that make sense? So in some ways, you might think of this as a convergent approach. Right? i am sort of got a goal in mind, and I'm sort of drilling towards that. And once I've got enough information, then I don't need to look at anything else. I can make my decision. That's backward chain. Does forward chain go? Um, well, as the name implies, you don't start with the decision you're going to make. You might have no idea what decision you're going to make. Okay? Instead, you just start with the data. What do you know? Right? Gather as much data as you can. Just get everything. You don't know whether it's going to be relevant or not. Just grab it. Okay? Once you've got all of that, try your best. Combine everything you've got here. Right? and see, all right, what does this lead to? What decision or decisions might this lead me toward? Right? Now, with the clothing, that wasn't such a good example for uh, forward chain. That was more of a backward chain situation. Start with a decision, look for some data. Okay? But just yesterday, I had to make a decision which was forward chain, which was, who should I choose to be the three people to get points for best and fairest after sport. Okay? So if you don't know the system, best and fairest for great sport, um, you don't just pick one person who gets the award, you actually pick three. And they get three points, two points, one point. Okay? And at the end of the season, um, you add up everyone's points and then you get an overall best and fairest. Okay? Now here's the thing. Um, I, have, I have 24 people on my two teams. Actually, I only had 12 people who played a game yesterday because unfortunately our bees didn't. Our bees were so awesome, they intimidated the other team, they didn't even turn up. So anyway, so I just had 12 players to choose from. Okay? So I go and have a look at my list, right? Now, if I were to backward chain this, okay, it would look something like this. Okay, look at player number one. Should this person get points for best and fairest? So there's my decision that I have to make. Right? And then I think about, okay, well, what data relates to that? So then I, I, I think back through the game, I'm like, oh, okay, they did this. Oh, they dropped the ball there. Oh, they scored there, and so on, okay? So then, I will think, okay, now that I've got as much data as I can, 
I'll make a decision on that. And it might be yes or no. Or it might be two points or one point or whatever. Okay. But you can start to see why this is a problematic approach to this particular problem, right? Because having started with this decision, I'm going to have to do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And it's a very time-consuming process in this example. Okay. So instead, I'm going to start with the data. Okay. I'm going to now go back to the game first, rather than any particular decision, and replay the game of, okay, this is what happened, uh, this is what stood out, this was unusual, this doesn't usually happen, okay? And then I'll think, okay, based on all of that data, I'm going to make a decision that this will be a person who I think stood out the most, and they're going to get three points. This one will get two, this one will get one. All right? So because it begins with the data, this is often called a data-driven approach. It's often what works best when you simply don't know which choices to actually start asking, right? All you can do is look at the situation and say, well, what do we know? And therefore, what decisions can we make on the basis of it, right? It's often also very helpful where there's not just one thing you have to choose. You're actually going to end up with a few different conclusions, right? So for instance, in my knowledge base, my rules might be things like, if someone scores, right, or I look at all the people who scored, maybe I have three players, and I would say, okay, they're going to be my top contenders for best and fairest, right? So there's a rule that's fired, uh, that's, that's been related, that's been relevant, right? And then I'll have a look at other rules, and I'll put that all together, and I'll see who are my top three. So you see how that's, it's a different way of looking at it, right? Does anyone want to clarify on any of the, that, the difference between...